Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, uh, namaste to all. Welcome back to this lecture series on evolutionary game theory. We have been discussing about ESS, how we compute ESS. Uh, I am Dr. Gopal from Department of HSS, IIT Dharwal in Karnataka. So, in this lecture what we will do, we will continue with our discussion regarding ESS and we will see few properties of ESS. For example, how it is related to the notion of Nash equilibrium that we had one equilibrium concept in game theory and apart from that we will see finite population ESS for example for what happens that this uh, notion of ESS that we saw till now we assume that there is a large population and then a uh, sufficiently small mutants are there with respect to that we compute ESS. But now we will see what happens when the original population is not very large it is a small population. So, we are going to discuss these, these two things in this lecture. So, to proceed with, so if you remember when we started this evolutionary game theory, then we saw how this rational game theory that we called is different from the evolutionary game theory, okay. And we pointed out many, you know, differences, okay. But if you see, there is a few similarities also between this rational game theory and evolutionary game theory. So, we defined ESS in a way that if uh, all the members of a population, if they adopt any strategy and then this population becomes immune to any invasion, then we call that strategy as ESS. So, this is how we define ESS. As I told you that uh, we use fitness instead of payoff in this evolutionary game theory. So, when we calculate the fitness, then there is some similarity between this evolutionary game theory and the usual game theory that we talk about, okay. So, when we calculate the fitness of an individual, this fitness cannot be measured or calculated in isolation. Fitness of an organism will always depend upon the other organisms in the population. So, it is with respect to the in the context of population, whatever population is there, okay. So, the idea is we cannot measure the fitness in the isolation and it will always depend upon rest of the population, the population where this individual belongs to, okay. So, this, this thing is similar to the way we calculate this payoff in the case of normal game theory. So, what happens? An individual chooses some strategy depending upon his preference, okay. The strategy that this individual chooses maximizes his payoff given the strategies chosen by other uh, players that are playing the game. So, these two mechanisms that is why the condition that is why the scenario that we are seeing in evolutionary game theory that is also seems similar to this strategic interaction interaction that we talk about in game theory. So, this is one similarity between uh, rational game theory as we uh, talked about this and evolutionary game theory. We use fitness as payoff, okay. And as I already told that payoff also depends on characteristics of the organisms with which it interacts. So, basically both approaches be it evolutionary game theory or the rational game theory the decision making process in both involves some sort of strategic interaction. This is the point that I want to bring here, okay. So, this is how we see that there is certain similarity between this rational game theory and evolutionary game theory. Only difference is that in game theory, individual chooses one strategy, but in evolutionary game theory, strategies are not chosen by the individual organisms, but these are genetically ha hardwired with this organism. So, to have more idea 
and more formally to have this idea how ESS, uh, how this evolutionary game theory is related to normal game theory, what we will do, we will see how this ESS is related to Nash equilibrium. So basically for that what we will do, we will just see and compare the conditions or the definition, mathematical definition for Nash equilibrium and ESS. So here I am mentioning in the first bullet, in the equation number 1, we are having this condition for Nash equilibrium. So it says, it says that the payoff here in case of Nash equilibrium, this is not fitness, this is payoff. So expected payoff or simply payoff of strategy P against itself should always be greater or equal to payoff of P against Q. It simply means that there is no such Q that gives a better payoff compared to this P against P. So this is how in other words, simpler words we say that the player has no incentive to move to some other strategy unilaterally, you know, given what other players are playing. So it, it cannot better off his payoff, it cannot improve his payoff by moving to some, some other strategy. So this is the simple meaning of this condition. This is how we define the Nash equilibrium. So again I am telling for all Q other than P, this should be satisfied. The payoff of P, strategy P against itself is always greater or equal to the payoff of P against Q. So this is the simple definition of Nash equilibrium. If we have a look at the definition of ESS that we just did in our previous lecture, then what is happening? We did two, two kinds of you know ESS, one was mild and other one was strict or strong. Okay? So the first definition is of strong ESS, it says that the fitness of P, strategy P against P should always be greater than fitness of P against Q, the mutant strategy, Q is here mutant strategy, okay? mutant strategy. Okay? And this should be true for all Q other than P. This is the idea. Okay? And we saw that in previous class that when there is uh, one strong ESS does not exist, then what we do? We go for mild, state, uh, mild ESS. And what is mild ESS? It says that when these two are equal, that means strategy P is doing as strategy P is doing against Q, we do not have this strong uh, mild ESS and in such situation what we what is required is that fitness associated with P against Q should be Q against Q. Okay? So our idea is another mutant or mutant strategy should always be lower than fitness associated with P against mutant strategy. And this should be true for all Q other than P. So this is how we define Nash equilibrium here through equation number 1 and strict ESS and mild ESS like this. So if we, if we compare these two conditions, then we find that if you see this and combine this with this, okay then these two are nothing but definition of Nash equilibrium. So from here we can always say that an ESS is a Nash equilibrium. Okay? Again I am telling, if we compare this condition combined with this condition, this is nothing but this condition, equation number 1. So it simply means if, so for example suppose some strategies uh, following this condition for strict or strong ESS then automatically it is following this condition. Similarly, in case of mild ESS also, if one strategy is following or this condition is hold true, then what is happening? It is again automatically following this condition. So in this way we can say that ESS is always a Nash equilibrium. ESS strategy is always 
part of Nash equilibrium. This is how we are trying to draw parallel between uh, usual normal game theory or the rational game theory that we called it and evolutionary game theory. Okay. If you go further and if we start thinking about how what the converse of this as I told in the previous slide that an ESS is always a Nash equilibrium. strategy okay we just proved in the uh, previous slide so how about the converse of it is every nash equilibrium also an ess so the answer for this is no because an ess is more stringent condition okay so as we saw in the previous slide this is the definition of nash equilibrium and the definition of ESS is this plus something else. Okay. So, this is how we can tell that this ESS is Nash equilibrium plus a stability condition that if we talk about the in terms of game that a minor perturbation in the game setting of the game will not change the equilibrium. This is how we define ESS in terms of game setting. Okay. So, having known this, if we realize this that ESS is, is something extra compared to Nash equilibrium and it requires some other stability condition so that minor perturbations cannot you know disturb the equilibrium, then we can say that in the language of game theory that ESS is a refinement of Nash equilibrium as a solution concept. Okay. So, this is clearly more stringent condition compared to Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, for to realize this we will have this example. So, basically suppose there is some strategy P is there and this strategy P satisfies following two conditions. Okay. So, condition number 1 F P comma P is equal to F Q comma P for all Q not equal to P. So, simply it means what does it mean? It means the fitness or payoff of P against P is equal to the payoff of Q against P. Okay. This means Q is a as good as best response of P as P is a best response to itself. This simply means that P is a Nash equilibrium strategy. Okay. And this condition need not need needless to say this should be followed for all q no other than p. Okay. How about uh, condition number 2? This is fitness or payoff of p against q should be less than fitness or payoff of q against q. Okay. So, the fitness of q in response to itself is always greater than fitness associated with P against Q. This and this should be true for all Q other than P. This simply means if we combine these two things, the second condition means that P is not an ESS. Okay. So, clearly we can see with this condition P is a Nash equilibrium strategy, but it is not an ESS. So, simply idea is that for a strategy to become an ESS, it should be a Nash equilibrium, but also something else that makes it ESS. That is why I told that ESS is more stringent and it requires some extra condition. That is why converse is not true. So, every Nash equilibrium is not an ESS. So, that is why I have written here a Nash equilibrium is not always an ESS. Okay. One example we can take as we did it here, a weakly dominated Nash equilibrium strategy is not an ESS. Okay. So, clearly I am again telling that every ESS 
is a Nash equilibrium strategy but but a Nash equilibrium strategy may or may not be an ESS. So, this is the gist of whole thing we just talked about. Okay. Now, we'll move to the next you know property. Okay. So, this property says that a symmetric strict Nash equilibrium is an ESS. Okay, as I as we just uh, discussed that a Nash equilibrium strategy may or may not be an ESS. That is true. Then we are just thinking about how what how we can guarantee that a Nash equilibrium strategy, what are the conditions when a Nash equilibrium strategy is an ESS. So, for that the property is that a symmetric strict Nash equilibrium is an ESS. A strict Nash equilibrium is a Nash equilibrium in which each player's strategy is a unique best reply. Okay? So, that any other strategy delivers a strictly lower payoff. Okay? So, this is how we can define strict Nash equilibrium. Okay? So, this clearly we can say that a symmetric strict Nash equilibrium is an ESS and this is how we define a strict Nash equilibrium. So, for any Nash equilibrium we already have shown that a Nash equilibrium strategy may or may not be an ESS, but if the Nash equilibrium is strict then a symmetric Na strict Nash equilibrium strategy is always an ESS. Okay? So, basically we just saw the definition of strict Nash equilibrium. So, the same thing is true for this strong ESS that we saw in the previous class. Okay? So, this condition for strong ESS is identical to the definition of strict Nash equilibrium. So, mathematically also we can see as the conditions are same for strong ESS and strict Nash equilibrium. Okay? The same condition that we have done already done. So, that is why we can conclude that a symmetric strict Nash equilibrium is an ESS. So, this is the other property. Okay? I hope it is clear. So, we will move forward. So, next property is that if an ESS is not a pure strategy, okay, then it is a mild strategy, mild ESS. Okay? So, we remember, so this, this property is talking about mixed strategy ESS. So, basically if ESS is not a pure strategy ESS, then it is a mixed strategy ESS and if you remember we in the previous lecture, we calculated the ESS for Hawk and Dove game and where we, where it turned out that it does not have a pure strategy uh, ESS, it had a mixed strategy ESS. Okay? So, this property is related to that only. So, this is an ESS, if it is not a pure strategy and it is a mixed strategy ESS, then it is a mild ESS. And if you remember this, when we found it out for Hawk and Dove game, that clearly we saw that there was no st strict or strong ESS there. If you remember the result, strong ESS, no strong ESS there in Hawk Dove game. Okay, and we found out that P equal to BYC is a is an ESS which was a mild ESS. And we concluded that if all members of the population choose hawk 
with probability b y c then this population is immune to any invasion. So, why I am telling this? I am just telling it so that you can connect it to this uh, result that we found in the previous lecture. And if if you remember clearly, you can recall that when we calculated, then we told that this is a mild ESS. So, that is the idea. If there is a mixed strategy ESS and it is not a pure strategy ESS, then it will be a mild ESS. So, this is the uh, another property of the ESS and you can relate it to the hogged up game that we solved. Okay. So, next we will come to the next property. Next property is that not every game has an ESS. Okay. So, here this is one example. This game given in this example, this game does not have an ESS. So, if we calculate, so there are two strategies x and y and if you calculate for both whether x is an ESS or y is an, SS, is an ESS with the procedure that we discussed in previous uh, two lectures how to find out the ESS, then you will come to know that both of these strategies they are not ESS not ESS. Okay. So, this is how this is the next property. I hope it is clear. So, basically what we saw. So, if we do just a simple recap, then we saw that an ESS is always a Nash equilibrium. This was our one property. Then we did that a Nash equilibrium is not always an ESS. It may or may not be an ESS. Okay, and one example is weakly dominated Nash equilibrium strategies that are not ESS. The other property was a symmetric strict Nash equilibrium is always an ESS. Then next what we did, if an ESS is not a pure strategy, it is a mixed strategy ESS, then it will be a mild ESS, not a strong ESS. And the last property that we did was not every game has an ESS. You can solve at your home solve for both x and y whether they are ESS or not and you will come to know that this game does not have an ESS and even if you go for some you know mixed strategy ESS you will come to know that this is also not there okay fine. So, just to practice we can have this you know example. Okay. So, this example is there. So, what we will do? We will try to find out. Uh, we will do some practice with this example. The job is to find out Nash equilibrium in this in these two games, game tables and ESS. So, it is pretty simple. We can find out the Nash equilibrium and ESS. So, if we do, if you solve it, you will find that in the in this game, the left hand side game, there are two NEs, one is x comma x and y comma y. So, this is one any, this is the other Nash equilibrium. In the right hand game also, x comma x is an is a Nash equilibrium and y comma y is also a Nash equilibrium. It is pretty sim simple, I hope you can find it out. Okay. But when we it comes out to be uh, to the ESS, then what happens here in left game? both x and y are ESS, okay. but in the right game only x is an ESS. Okay. So, you can see suppose we check for x in this left game. So, suppose you consider that the initially the population is of all x then what happens a mutant at level of epsilon comes with strategy y. So, we can calculate the fitness of strategy x. 
so suppose i am writing the fitness of strategy x okay the mutation level is, is epsilon and 1 minus epsilon okay at the level of mutation of epsilon i am calculating the fitness of x so what will happen the probability of x interacting with x is 1 minus epsilon that's what we did in previous classes multiplied by x is interacting with x getting 2 2 plus the probability of x interacting with y is epsilon that is a fraction of y multiplied by 0 this comes out to be 2 1 minus epsilon this is how we did okay similarly i can calculate fitness value of y strategy again the probability of y interacting with x is 1 minus epsilon multiplied by y interacting with x 0 plus epsilon the prob probability of y interacting with y okay multiplied by 1 so this comes out to be epsilon and you can see for x to be ess this should be greater than this for a small value of epsilon so 2 1 minus epsilon should be greater than epsilon if we solve this you get this is 2 minus 2 epsilon so this is 3 epsilon less than 2 so epsilon less than 2 by 3 so for all values less than 2 by 3 this is true this fx is greater than f by so it it we can say that for all values of epsilon this is true that means x is an ess okay similarly we can prove for by also now we can start in the left game only that the population of population of all by is there then epsilon fraction of mutants with strategy x is there so the composition or the mix is again this epsilon is a fraction of x here and 1 minus epsilon is a fraction of y here so we can calculate the fitness of y which is the original strategy so this will come this will come out to be the interaction of y and y okay 1 minus epsilon this is the probability multiplied by 1 plus epsilon interaction between y and x 0 so this is 1 minus epsilon similarly we can calculate fitness of x which is the mutant strategy now in this case earlier when we started here it was the original strategy okay so th this is 1 minus epsilon probability of x interacting with y so x interacting with y 0 plus epsilon x interacting with x that is 2 this is 2 epsilon okay and for y to be ess what should be true 1 minus epsilon should be greater than 2 epsilon this simply means epsilon is less than 1 by 3 so again it is true for all values smaller than 1 by 3 y is an ess so this is how we can show both x and y are ess similarly we can do the same exercise for this game and it turns out that only x is an ess y is not an ess okay so i think this is clear so the idea was to show this example was to show that both x comma x and y comma y are Nash equilibrium in both the games this game and this game but only by both x and y are ess here but in the second game the right hand side game x is an ess but y is not an ess so the idea was to demonstrate that it is not necessary for all Nash equilibrium strategies to be ess okay i hope it is clear okay so having done this what we will do now as i already told that we when we started this discussion we considered that 
there is a population of very there is a very large population and there are many you know infinitely kind of infinitely many members in that population and in that population there is a sufficiently small mutation and then we studied these ESS and uh, this we analyze how to find out ESS and that is what we did in the previous lectures. But now we will see how about if this population instead of being large enough it is not that much large and this is finitely small ok. This is not a very large population and the mutant is so let us see this what happens the mutant is just a sim single member ok. So, we will see this we will now consider a population with finitely few members and the mutation earlier we assumed that it is a small mutation now that in a small mut mutation we will consider as a single member mutation a single member is adopting a different strategy ok. So, we are relaxing these two assumptions earlier one assumption was large population and mutation involving only a small fraction ok. Now, in this modification what we are doing now there are only finitely few members in the population this is not a very large population and mutation by a single member only which is adopting a different strategy ok. But important finding uh, we will see some uh, few findings there but important finding uh, uh, among them is that evolution leads to spite ok. Spite is a behavioral tendency where what happens someone chooses something that harms himself or harms that person, but it harms the other person more. So, this tendency is called spite. So, somebody is choosing something to harm someone else even though it is harming that person also. So, this tendency is called spite or we call it spiteful behavior. So, what is happening in this case of finite population evolution? This evolution is leading towards spiteful behavior, how we will see, ok. Ok. So, to analyze and to find out the definition of ESS in finite population, what we will do? We will start with a population of n individuals, ok, where n is greater or equal to 2. So, there is a population which has 2 or many two or more individuals or members ok. Now, we assume that this population is invaded by a single mutant with the strategy by and we can assume that initially original strategy is x. So, this population with two or more members they are adopting strategy x originally ok. Then it is being invaded by a single mutant with a different strategy that is by ok. And again like we did earlier what we are doing we are considering a pair wise interaction ok. If you want if you want you can try uh, interaction with more members also, but for the simplicity here we are doing this pair wise interaction. What does it mean? It means that two players are randomly just like earlier matched to play this game or interaction ok. So, this is the setting I am repeating once again. So, we started with a population with two or more members originally all of them were adopting strategy x. Now, this population is being invaded by a single mutant with some different strategy by and in this population whole you know mix now after mutation we are considering this pairwise interaction ok. So, now suppose we we want to write as we already did in other variants also in the uh, previous classes that fitness of a member that uses strategy x ok and it is matched with someone using strategy by ok. This is how we represent it. So, f x y is as the usual notation we followed the similar notation in earlier case also. So, this is the fitness of an, an individual 
who is using x and the opponent is individual with strategy pi this is how we interpret it okay fine so in order to calculate ess or in order to find out ess what we will do we will try to write the fitness of the member of the that is using incumbent strategy x or the original strategy x so as i said earlier that we are starting with a population and every member of this population using x okay so we are writing the fitness of that member who are using this original strategy x after mutation so what will happen now after mutation there are n minus 1 members that are using that are using original strategy that is x okay and since mutant is only one as we described here that a single mutant so that is why this one person total was n n minus 1 are using uh, this original strategy x and one mutant is there that is using y which is the mutant strategy so pay attention now i want to write the fitness of a member that is using the incumbent strategy or the original strategy x okay so how can we write it so if you pay attention then you would realize that now in the population n minus 1 players are using x one player is using y so if we if we try to find out the fitness level of the member that is using x then we have to consider an interaction of the player playing x with other players as it is pairwise interaction so what may happen either the player that is playing with x can interact with the player that is interact that is using by strategy or it can interact with another player that is using x strategy so that is what we are doing here okay so if i write the fitness of member using incumbent strategy x so either this can match can be matched with another player with x or it can be matched with another player with uh, with by okay but what will happen there will be some probability of this person being matched with another person with strategy x so that will happen with this probability n minus 2 upon n minus 1 so this n minus 2 upon n minus 1 this is the probability probability that a player with x is matched with another player with x okay so how we calculate this probability you can take idea from here so now there are n minus 1 players with x one player with y so here i am choosing 2x here i am matching two players both of them using x so the probability is this similarly this is the probability with which x strategy can be matched x strategy can be matched with sorry can be matched with y strategy okay so clearly probability with which x can match with x multiplied by fitness level of a person using x against x similarly plus the probability when x can be matched with by and fitness level of x when it is playing against by so this is what this is nothing but expected fitness of a member in this population who is using the original strategy x again i will repeat that 
it can be matched a person using x can be matched to both types of players either who are using original strategy x or mutant strategy y so when it is uh, matched against the mutant player then this is the probability and this is the fitness when it is matched against player playing x then this is the probability of that and this is the fitness of that okay on the other hand when we talk about the mutant player because there is only one mutant player and that single mutant player player can only be matched with the incumbent player or the player that is using original strategy x so that is why the fitness of the mutant player is nothing but f of y comma x so mutant strategy against original strategy so this is how we can write the fitness of both type of members one is with original strategy x and other with mutant strategy y so having written this these payoffs now we will simply apply our definition or the idea of ess that is that the fitness level of player that is using x that is this lhs left hand side of this equation should be more than the fitness level of the mutant with some other strategy by here and this should be true for all y's other than x okay so this is the condition that we got that if this left hand side which is the fitness of the player that is using original strategy x original strategy in the population that is x here if it is greater than the fitness of the mutant with some other strategy then we say that this x is an ess so just like we had definition of ess both mild as well as strong similarly we have this definition of ess for finite population okay there is little confusion here this is not la this is all y sorry for the typing all by not equal to x so this condition should hold for all by other than x then we say that x is an ess okay so we can say how this can be converted into normal ess that we did so there we assume that n is very large so if we put n to be equal to infinite then what will happen this will become what this first term this will this will become f x comma x the second term as as in infinite this will become zero and the whole term will zero so this and this is f y comma x so we have usual condition for all y other than x so this is the usual ess usual ess or infinite or large population ess so you can see how this is a special case of this equation so basically this condition is very general true for all populations n can be anything and if we put n equal to infinite or the very large population then we get the usual condition that we got in previous lectures okay fine <clears throat> so here suppose now if we have a look at this now suppose this f x comma x this this term this is less than this then what will happen suppose this is true so the strategy x the fitness that it is having against itself is less than the fitness of mutant strategy is against x then what will happen that means x is not a best reply or best response to itself in that case what will happen if we want to have x as an ess this will happen when this is large enough when this is large enough then it can compensate for the loss here and again the whole left hand side expression will be more than this right hand side expression okay that's what it is written here this fx by should be big enough so that the condition still holds despite this fx comma x being less than f by comma x okay this simply means that x can be an ess even though it is not a best response to itself what does that mean it means that this in case of what we call 
finite population ESS may or may not be a Nash equilibrium strategy. This is the interpretation of that. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, this is what we got as finite population ESS definition. So, what we will do to realize this more, what we will do, we will do one example. So, for that we will take this uh, marketing game where there are four companies. Okay, So, our population here is of four companies. As I told you, in this case we will have finite population, few uh, members are there. So, here our n is 4. Okay. And we are considering a pairwise contest or pairwise interaction in this population of four companies. So, two of them are matched randomly to compete for a customer. Okay. This is the story goes like this. And this uh, to compete for this customer, what they do, they do some customer specific marketing. Okay. And each company can go for either modest marketing strategy or the heavy marketing strategy. What is the outcome is that high heavy marketing strategy is costlier that involves a lot of money, but good point is that it produces a lot of sales. Okay? So, this is how the story goes. So, we have this total four companies that is our population of four companies in evolutionary setting we always talk about population. Out of this population of four company companies, two of them are matched randomly to play this marketing game or to compete for this customer. And to compete for this customer, what they do, they do some customer specific marketing and in that they have two strategies. One is choosing modest marketing strategy, other one is choosing heavy marketing strategy. The heavy marketing strategy is costlier, but it is more result producing. So, this is the story. Having done the story, what we can do, we can come up with this game matrix. Okay? So, the purpose is just to make you understand to how to apply this you know finite population ESS criteria. Okay? So, depending upon this story we have come up with this uh, game matrix where what is happening if both companies are involved in this heavy and heavy marketing then what happens they pay a lot of cost advertisement cost or whatever cost then their net benefit is very low that is 1 comma 1 and when they are involved in both modest and modest then they do not incur a lot of marketing cost and their payoff or fitness level is more both of them get 9 comma 9. If one is heavy marketing other one is market uh, modest marketing then modest marketing uh, company will lose the customer and other person will get the customer. So, that despite paying the heavy cost for heavy marketing it is still having high payoff or fitness. Similarly, we can see for this modest comma heavy. So, Putting the story aside, what we can do, we can calculate the ESS or we can see, uh, analyze this game with the help of this game matrix. Okay? So, simply suppose we consider that if we start with that modest is an ESS or not. So, say in beginning, so let us start with all members. are using modest okay then a single mutant appears in this population with the strategy heavy Okay. So, we have to check whether this modest is ESS or not against heavy. So, if we go back to our criteria. So, suppose if X is an ESS or not what we do we put this take the probability then fitness of X against X the original against original plus this probability original against mutation should be greater than fitness of mutation against original. So, in our example what is original? So, here modest is original, this is the original strategy of the population 
okay and heavy is the mutant strategy okay so what is the criteria for ess for modest to be ess so this if i write the that condition so if you remember n minus 2 upon n minus 1 this is the probability with which original meets original so this should be f of i am writing m for modest 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 plus 1 upon n minus 1 this is the probability with original meets the mutant f for modest against heavy this should be greater than what this should be greater than fitness of the mutant that is heavy here against modest this is the idea so if we calculate the left hand side so what is n here n in our example is 4 4 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 1 okay multiplied by f modest modest this thing you see what is the f modest modest so when modest is interacting with another modest it gets 9 plus 1 upon n minus 1 1 upon 4 minus 1 into fitness level of modest against heavy modest against heavy gets 3 so this is nothing but 2 by 3 into 9 plus 1 by 3 into 3 if you solve it this is what 7 ok so this left hand side is 7 how about the right hand side f h, h comma m so f h comma m this person is getting 8 so this is 8 so it is here this 8 is greater than 7 here opposite is true this condition does not hold ok this is not less this is more 8 is more than 7 you see how I calculated ok so what is the conclusion its conclusion is that modest is not an ESS ok so we will see whether heavy is a is an ESS or not so for that I am just drawing the our game matrix here so basically we had we have two firms here from 1 here from 2 and both of them have this choice of heavy marketing strategy or modest marketing strategy here also heavy and modest nothing but I am just drawing the same game table for reference here so that I can write the payoffs so 3 comma 8 this is 9 comma 9 ok so we want to see whether heavy is <coughs> Uh, ESS or not. So basically, I mean, our population there are four firms. Okay. So what <coughs> what we will assume that we will start with that all of them has heavy as their strategy. Okay. So heavy is the original strategy in the population. Okay. Now say there is a single mutant single mutant with strategy modest ok so we want to see <coughs> whether this heavy is ESS or not so simply as per our definition that we described the ESS in finite population we can write the equation for whether this heavy is uh, ESS or not. So, basically the probability when <coughs> this heavy interacts with heavy is 2 by 3 multiplied by the payoff when when heavy interacts with another heavy. So, as as earlier we are taking this pairwise interaction pairwise interaction only ok. So, one option is as I earlier defined that heavy may interact with heavy or it may interact with uh, mutant which has modest as mutant strategy. So, this is payoff when it interacts with 
heavy. So, 2 by 3 is the probability and this is the payoff plus it will interact the heavy can heavy kind of member of population player it will interact with probability 1 by 3 with a mutant player and the payoff is f of heavy with modest which is a mutant this should be greater than for heavy should to be finite population ESS the payoff of mutant which is modest against heavy strategy. Okay. So, right hand side we can clearly see this when modest interacts with heavy okay, then modest gets 3. So, right hand side is 3. How about the left hand side? This is 2 by 3 multiplied by f heavy heavy. So, when heavy interacts with heavy it gets 1, 1 plus 1 by 3 multiplied by f h m heavy modest. So, when heavy interacts with modest we are here. So, it gets 8. So, 8. So, this is 10 by 3. This is clearly more than 3. So, our condition for finite population ESS is satisfied. So, that we can say we can clearly show that heavy is an ESS. So, what we did in today's lecture we try to find out uh, first we saw a few properties of ESS then we saw the ESS the concept of ESS in finite population and to internalize it we did this one example of marketing game of four forms in population. Okay. So, we will stop here for today and in the next lecture what we will do we will try to get into some dynamics of evolution. Okay. So, thank you very much we will stop here. Understanding oneself, understanding others, understanding society at large, understanding the nature, these are all driven by basic human curiosity. We would all love to understand why things happen, what happens, what is the final outcome, why certain things fail. These are all exercises that we perform in various domains of knowledge. Therefore, knowledge in various domains you would realize they are actually social artifacts. They have to be rooted into historical perspective, they have to be culturally salient and there would be socio-political reasons behind this. Whether you talk with respect to engineering sciences, whether you talk with respect to physical sciences, biological sciences, social sciences, that is the reason why humanities and social sciences should be understood by all of us. The knowledge that is segregated, that is divided with respect to areas, specializations, all of them needs to be understood in its context. And what provides the context? It is the social reality. How do you correlate knowledge in a given domain with the cultural reality, with the social reality? with the socio-political compulsions. Okay. How do you understand the law of nature okay, in its totality and for doing that you require the understanding of humanities and social sciences. Say for instance, if you are trying to understand the effect of a particular bacteria, a virus, any microbe, how it affects behavior, how it affects the organism, human being. You start looking at it from a pure biological point of view. If you are trying to look at a particular type of a wavelength, say for example, you are emphasizing on the understanding of the effect of radiation on human life. You are looking at things from a physical point of view. You are looking at the corresponding changes inside the body. You are looking at the physiological side of the uh, understanding of the information. You are trying to understand why despite knowing the risk that is 
inbuilt in the process, why is still human beings engage into it? You are looking at it from a pure behavioral point of view. Why society at large admire things which has full of risk? You are trying to understand things from a pure sociological point of view. Why people use particular uh, set of words to explain those experiences? You are trying to understand things from the linguistic point of view. So, there are whole lot of things and then finally, you try to combine all of them to say that what are the guiding principles in life. Then you say you are looking at life, you are looking at humanity from a pure philosophical point of view and this is what social sciences courses provide you. They provide the context to you in which you would be finally positioning the understanding of the knowledge in any given domain. It could be engineering, it could be sciences, it could be medical sciences, it could be social sciences stuff, it could be humanities stuff. So, con contextualizing the knowledge is what humanities social science courses help you obtain.